today's lesson is on selection masking. So if I wanted to select this figure, which by the way, this photo is courtesy of Pexels. Um, it is a royalty free photo that I found on Pexels. Um, if I wanted to select this dancer, right, and I wanted to get a really tight, a really clean selection, right, I would be using a selection mask. So I'm going to start actually, I'm going to start by using the quick selection tool or whatever combination of tools you, you know, you want to start with. So I'm going to go through and I'm kind of, I'm just kind of doing a really loose, I'm going to fine tune this. I'm going to fine tune this much better than I am. Right, so let me go through here. I want to select as much as I can. I could make my brush bigger. That would make life a little bit easier. I'm going to focus on the upper half of her body for this tutorial. So, um, because I can just move it up like that. Yes. You know, the space bar turns your cursor into the hand tool. So if you are zoomed in, which I'm going to be zoomed in and moving around a lot um, throughout, command plus and minus um, zooms you in and out. That's your keyboard shortcut. The space bar is the hand tool. We want to really get in here, right? So I want to subtract and add. I want to I want to start with the best kind of selection I can because if I'm using images or sources from different sex areas, right, from different photos, I want that to be a dynamite selection to begin with. And really, this quick selection tool, you don't need to do more than just click and let Photoshop do the work, right? Photoshop will find the edges for you as best it can. There, it did a pretty good job right there. Okay, so once I get what I think is a pretty good selection, then I can go and click on the mask icon. There's two ways that you could view this. Right now it is showing me the mask on the outside, right? And so um, it's, it's turning that part red. So I can, if I would prefer to have it the opposite way, I can select inverse, which is opposite, flip those, and then put the mask back on, and then I'm masking, and, you know, I'm, I'm adding or subtracting from the red, and I'm gonna do that in just a moment um, by painting on it. But I actually prefer to see it the other way. So let me go to, let me flip that back, let me flip that back, and let's select inverse, I want first selected and there we go. Okay. In order to adjust and, you know, fine tune my selection here to fix my selection up, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go with my standard brushes. I want a hard edge brush, not a soft brush because I don't want the edge of my, my piece to be, um, soft. I want it to be nice and hard. And how this works is you are going to paint with black to add to the selection. So here I am painting with black to add to my selection and switching to white to subtract. So if there's a part that I need to subtract from, like um, here, like back here, right, I need to. Now you can use any combination of this. Now that was a terrible edge, but you get, you get the idea. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix that up. But you can use any combination of these selection tools. And if I need to, I can, if I double click on that, right, I can adjust the opacity. I can even adjust here. So the mask, the color indicates the mask. I guess I could do it here versus playing with where the selection was. So if I want, let's go with the selected area. The color indicates the selected area. That's going to make her red instead. But I can bring this down even, right? If it's too harsh or if I don't like the color, you can modify the color then we put it back on. Okay, there it is. Um, I actually like it on the other. <laughs> let me flip it back again. There we go. All right, let me flip it back again. All right, there we are. Okay, so let me zoom in. Because so, areas like this is, is where it's gonna it gets a little complicated, right? Hair especially is where you want to spend some significant time. I kind of like going back and forth with the lasso tool. So if I, like, let's say that I, okay, I decided that I wanted to find that edge of the hair this part wants to be, I want that part to be red. Black is in the back, command delete, fills a selection with a color. So because I had black in the back, I can just do command delete and it'll fill in the selection there. Oops, I'm on white, let me switch that back. So I can kind of go through and I just want to fine tune that selection. So many of the pieces that you create are going to start with a really dynamite selection. If you're making an advertisement and you have to select the product, if you're making anything, it's important that you have that really good selection so that it's nice and clean when you go to transfer it to your new piece. Let me get all the way over here by your hand. There we go. There's a little complicated bit. So black will add to the selection. Right, if I gotta get right in there, I gotta use this guy. All right. Flip it, command three, or I could have just painted into it. And that's going to get you your really, really fine tune and get yourself a really, really good selection. Now, let's say I didn't finish. I didn't finish my selection and in class is about to end. Well, what do I do? You can save the selection as long as this image is saved. So let me make sure I have this image. Let me save this image somewhere. I'm just going to throw it on my desktop and I'll leave it the name it is. Okay, save that image somewhere. Now I can go to select and I can go down to, oops, I'm going to take it off here. 
icon, take it off the mask mode, select, and I can go to save selection. But actually, before I do that, now I took it out of mask mode, any other selection tool, right? Any one of these other selection tools gives you this option up here called select in mask. This is a great way to just double check before you move it or you, you, you finalize it or you save it. In here, what you can do is you can look at what it's going to look like in different things, right? So if I want to look at it black on white or on a transparent layer, it'll show me what that selection looks like. And if I want to go through and I want to like, it, here it is, it's looking for the edge. See how it's kind of modifying the edge just a little bit? It's kind of moving it in and kind of blurring it. I can smooth the edge. I could feather the edge, which I wouldn't recommend because that's going to make it blurry. It can look for contrast here so it can help me find the edge. Um, Photoshop can do a, a lot of powerful things when it comes to the selection. So I hit OK. It saved my changes. Let's say class is over, right? I, I need to move. I need to save my selection. Select. I'm going to go down to save selection. It's going to save it as a channel. Save it as dancer. It's going to save it as a new channel. That's specific selection. So that if I got rid of my selection and I closed my document, right, and I, and I came back the next day, I could go to my channels panel. Go to my channels panel. The last channel, now new channel that I created is my dancer. Holding command, I'm using a Mac, so that would be control if you're on a PC, but I'm using a Mac, so holding command and clicking on the little thumbnail here will load up the selection so that when I'm ready to move her into my new document, I can. So to recap, when you are using the selection masks, you are clicking this icon, start with a selection, click on this icon, use black to add to the mask, there's me adding to the mask, and use white to subtract from the mask. Now I'm subtracting from the mask. Little itty, little itty bitty thing I just did there. So enjoy, have fun, and I can't wait to see your fantastic, fantastic selections.